There is a fifth dimension beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. We are now about to explore a mysterious and dark world, one from the darkest, most dreadful depths of Arl Stein's pages, in which we follow the masterminds, Dan Angel and Billy Brown, as they guide us through the macabre turned into material. We are going to be venturing into a zone unknown to science, unknown to humankind, but all the more real to kids scared of the dark and fearing what might lie under their beds and in their closets. Today we will be looking at a middle school girl named Samantha, one who's been in a dreadful sense of bad luck across her school life. And unfortunately for her, or maybe fortunately, a woman is going to come to her with the ideal prospects of granting three wishes. However, May this tax evasive, potentially, and generous genie hold some interior motives, some dark, dark actions that will bring Samantha to realize that with great power comes great responsibility. Without further ado, make sure to brace your seats as you venture into a dark and mysterious area of the mind one that the universe lies holding in the dark. The only way to come out potentially alive from this voyage is to hit that subscribe button and like button. But without further ado, you are now entering into the Goosebumps TV Zone as we present, be careful what you wish for. So today we're gonna to be talking about a obscure Goosebumps book series that maybe not a lot of you out there would know if you were some casual readers, but a lot of you collectors out there are probably aware of this book series from Goosebumps, and that is the Goosebumps TV Presents books. Now for those of you who don't know, the Goosebumps TV Presents books were novelizations of the 90s TV show episodes. So. These books are essentially uh, novels adapting episodes that were adapting books. Yeah, it's a little bit of Goosebumps Inception going on. Gooseception. But nonetheless, the reason why Goosebumps TV Presents books were a series was because back in the day when the Goosebumps TV show episodes would air on TV, you didn't really have the option to record episodes when they aired. And in terms of having episodes on hand to watch and experience whenever you want, as the bright angelic sunlight is on me, um, um, you would need to wait for the VHS tapes to come out. So as an alternative method, instead of having to wait on TV to the point that the episode would rerun, you instead could buy the TV Presents book and you would then have an adaptation of the episode. You would essentially have a version of the Goosebumps episode on hand with you at all times and you could then read it to experience it until you would wait uh, to watch it rerun or until it would come out on VHS and you bought the VHS tape. Uh, these books are also... Uh, pretty noticeably shorter than your average Goosebumps book. Uh, this TV Presents book that I'm covering today uh, clocked out to around 60 pages, which is a little bit over half the length of a normal standard Goosebumps book like from the OG62 or Series 2000, etc. Um, so let's specifically get into uh, the Goosebumps TV Present book that I'm covering today. The episode that I will be covering today in terms of the novel adaptation is Be Careful What You Wish For. Now, Be Careful What You Wish For is an episode that I watched in the past, but it's been a long time since I've seen it, so I did not rewatch it for this video just so I could experience the book as its own thing. And I've read the book before, a little while ago, and I definitely think that Be Careful What You Wish For is an overhated book. A lot of people say it's one of the worst Goosebumps books out there, that it's awful, that it's terrible. You got me. <laughs> uh, 
I wouldn't say that. I would say that it's a little bit boring. It's a little messy at points, but it's got some good concepts in there. It's got some good ideas. And relatively enough, I think the characters are fine. Even the bully character is one that you're meant to hate. And this TV book obviously is a shorter condensed version of the Be Careful What You Wish For story, except it's adapting the TV show, which is why it's shorter. This TV book, um, obviously at that point, is different from the original story. And how is it different? Um, let me just talk about what the book goes into. So you obviously open up with the main character, Samantha Bird. You find out that Samantha Bird is this middle school girl who's on the girls' basketball team. <laughs> And she's a complete klutz. She's the tallest girl in school, which makes her feel awkward physically. She's always really clumsy, falling over and stuff. She's not a good basketball player at all. And she's got this bully, this arch rival named uh, Judith Bellwood, who's this really mean girl, a popular girl in school who constantly picks on Samantha, makes fun of her last name, calling her a bird, how clumsy she is, how tall and lanky she is, and basically telling her that she should fly away and uh, essentially in a nice way tell her to fuck off, which is not nice at all. Judith Bellwood is a jerk. Your typical really mean bully character that you get in Goosebumps or really any other kids horror series over the top bullying and what happens one day is that as Samantha is in basketball practice she ends up finding this uh, black pendant with this red jewel on it um, on one of the I think benches um, in this gymnasium and she picks it up and holds on to it she wonders who might have left it it's really odd and strange looking and she ends up I believe putting it on and next thing you know she kept getting picked on by kids some boys step in and start playing keep away with the basketball with her and eventually they launch it up into the ropes up high above um, in the gymnasium and she has to um, try to climb up there and get the ball because her fellow basketball players are yelling at her, yo bird, go get the ball, stop being such a wimp. Um, and as she tries to climb up and get it, next thing you know she gets her foot caught in one of the gymnasium hanging rings and as she ends up falling backwards, lodges her foot on the ring and then she ends up falling, hitting the ground and then getting the wind knocked out of her and she blacks out temporarily. So she got really embarrassed and really humiliated. And you see Judith just constantly stockpiling on her, constantly insulting her and making fun of her, even at lunchtime after she got the wind knocked out of her. And eventually when Judith, uh, when Samantha, my bad, is walking home one day, she runs into Clarissa. Clarissa is this older lady, might be middle-aged, but she looks very like goth you know she's got a whole black outfit she's got feathers on the collar of her uh dress or skirt or whatever um she's got this you know long black hair that's piled up on her head she's got this hat with feathers on it really odd looking woman and she's got all black nail polish her nails actually look like claws a little bit and she's got this dreamy empty look in her eyes and judith runs into her kind of knocks her over being a klutz once again she helps Clarissa get up, in which they introduce each other. And then Clarissa basically wants to reward uh, Samantha's kindness because Samantha had proper manners with her and helped guide her back to uh, where she wanted to go because she ended up getting lost. And actually, Samantha ends up returning the pendant to Clarissa because you find out that actually Clarissa owns the pendant, which should raise some eyebrows because you're like, why would the pendant that you lost be in a local middle school gymnasium that makes no sense and it is a little fishy maybe it makes you think that it might have been planted somehow got him. we fucking got him. <laughs> but clarissa ends up trying to reward her and says all right i'm gonna let you keep the pendant and i'll grant you three wishes and obviously Jude, samantha thinks that you know, Clarissa's crazy, um, you know, a little bit loony. There's no way that she's going to grant me wishes. Uh, but she just says out of a little bit of pressure that Clarissa gives her that, hey, I want to be the best basketball player um, in my school. And Clarissa ends up granting it. But it goes terribly bad because what ends up happening is that 
uh, the other girls on the team end up becoming really tired, they end up becoming terrible basketball players, and they completely get obliterated in a game of basketball versus another team. So yeah, Samantha, you know, ends up uh, becoming the best basketball player, but it's at a cost. You know, she ends up basically jeopardizing her entire team over it. And then she ends up making another wish that ends up uh, potentially maybe not turning people into um, a giant swarm of flies. Yeah, she might just turn everybody on Earth into a giant colony of flies. So yeah, she ends up learning that you do have to be careful what you wish for because she has to uh, learn that, you know, not every wish ends up the way that you think you do. You might wish for something and it might go in a different way and you have to learn how to ask wishes properly. And when she tries to fix the situation, um, she potentially might find a solution. And the ending to this story, because it is adapting the episode, the episode ending is, in my opinion, better than the book ending because the book ending is very mean-spirited. It sort of dogpiles on a certain character, which kind of makes you just go, ugh. But in the episode, there is a little bit of comeuppance, there is a bit of revenge, and there is a final wish made at the end of the story, which is executed in a relatively clever manner. And that's essentially the TV Presents book faithfully adapting the episode. And again, it's 60 pages, so this book, because it is 60 pages, it is more tight-knit, it has better pacing, it's more condensed than the original Be Careful What You Wish For book from the OG 62. That book was a little bit boring at points. It felt a little bit padded. It kind of dragged out certain scenes. Meanwhile, this one is more to the point, in your face, going from scene to scene, covering all the important stuff, much like the episode cuts down on that little bit of filler. And uh, yeah, it is a faithful adaptation. So if you you know want to get your hands on this book, I don't know why you need it now, other than collection value, because the episode is available on various different platforms. But you know, if you want to get your hands on the TV book, this is a faithful adaptation to that. And I can see back in the day, people would probably enjoy this book more than the original Be Careful What You Wish For book, which personally, in my opinion, I do prefer this book over the uh, actual original book. And I will actually say that I actually prefer this book a little bit more than the episode because I think that this TV Presents book... Um, doesn't really deal with some of the corny acting and some of the low uh, kind of bad effects that are in the episode. I think the episode has never really been too much of my favorite. I thought the acting was whatever. I thought the effects were whatever. I still think that the second wish in the original book involving everybody disappearing on Earth is a lot more um, creepy. I think it's more creepy to be the only person on Earth. It's dead quiet everywhere you go, abandoned, very much dystopic. But in this TV book, in the episode, everybody turning into flies is more so kind of goofy. So that part I didn't prefer. But yeah, this book doesn't really deal with some of the negatives that I have with the episode. So I would actually give this book a uh, 7 out of 10. So this is the highest rated Be Careful What You Wish For version um, from Goosebumps, in my opinion. This is a decent fine book and uh, I like the fact that it is shorter. I like the fact that it cuts out on the filler, cuts out on the padding, makes it an easier read and I do recommend that you guys pick this up. If you can find this for cheap, go pick it up, go check it out. And another cool feature about this book is the fact that there is actually uh, pictures in the book. There are several pictures in the book with snapshots of scenes from the TV show and little one-liner explanations about each scene. Kind of feels like a slideshow presentation, but I still thought it was pretty cool. It's a nice little visual. And again, it is taking direct snapshots from the TV show, so it helps you visualize the book better as you're reading. Um, but it is located halfway in the book, so... That's essentially how this book is set up. That's how the book compares a little bit to the episode and to the original. And those are my overall thoughts. So if you like this review, if you like this quick little video, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and hit that like button. Also hit that post notification bell so you don't miss any future uploads that I have. And let me know down below what else do you want me to cover in Goosebumps. Obviously I'm trying to cover as much as I can in Goosebumps. Later I want to cover everything. But if there's any specific books or episodes or media that you want me to cover as soon as possible, comment it down below. 
If you've seen the Be Careful What You Wish For episode, let me know your thoughts about that episode. How does it compare to the original book? And if you've gotten your hands on this TV book, let me know how you felt about it. But that's all I got for today. It's your boy, The Horrorlander, and I am piecing out of this review. This scary, spectacular, and chivalrous review was warped forward into the light from the eternal abyss by none other than Brought Studios, formerly known as Broke Vought Studios. I am your host of the Goosebumps TV Zone, known none other than by the code name of BD, but my more popular epithet, The Horrorlander. In order for you to show your amazing support towards this TV program, this voyage into the macabre and mysterious, please make sure to once again hit that subscribe button and hit that like button, for it would be a great way to show your support to the brave voyagers and astronauts that travel through the shadowy depths of the human mind. And nonetheless, make sure to stay tuned for any future broadcast, for the wavelengths of the Goosebumps TV Zone are subject to all, and we appreciate your viewership over here. Please look forward to the next voyage, and stay tuned for when I may pay you a visit once again. To all the folks out there, this is the end, and for foremost, Godspeed. Speaking of tax evasive, that suit was hot, man. I am out of here. The feds ain't catching me today. No, sir. I ain't going to no goddamn Goosebumps TV zone. Do I look like a fraud? Y'all go to that bitch. I'm fucking hauling ass.